Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1987. We're going to be taking a look at Hank Williams Jr. and he's going to be performing My Name is Bocephus. And if you haven't seen my Hank Williams video yet, probably a good one to watch before this one. But I've also left in the intro on this particular performance because it gives a nice context for the song song and the performance itself. So let's get Hank and the Bama Band up on screen and see how they get on. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I have a problem of a lot of imposters running around these United States from time to time if you read the paper. So I had to think about it and write a song about that situation. <laughs> came in here to have some whiskey and some beer and say howdy to you all. You all know me. It's Hank Jr., you see. Hat and shades and beard and all. Now I have heard I've gotten the word about all these silly imposters running around. Let me tell you something now, they ain't real. Look close, they got no scars and they got no feel. They don't know nothing about whiskey, Ben, and hell. Now I'm looking for a lover. I come here to have fun. My name is Bo Cephas. Yeah, and I'm a son of a gun. Some of us is born with it. Some of them don't never, ever get it. Thank God I'm a guitar man. It's true, I love the money. I love all the honeys But the thing I love most of all Everybody loves me, but those that do will fight right to the end, because I got guitar friends from legendary Saturday nights. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in here. Unfortunately, at the moment, it seems that there's some disturbance with the mic, some kind of interference with the performance that we're looking at. But Hank Williams Jr., in terms of his playing, his sound, obviously being the son of Hank Williams, people are always going to expect you to sound a certain way and also... There's the problem of being compared to your dad the whole time because Hank Williams Jr. certainly would have experienced that early on in his career and to a certain extent did cover a lot of his dad's tracks, especially in the 60s and the 70s. Like I said, if you haven't seen the Hank Williams video, go and check that out because you'll find out that unfortunately Hank Williams passed away when he was only 29. And that would have been when Hank Williams Jr. was only three years of age. And we can see from this particular performance, there's so much attitude in there. And 
we've got so much lead guitar technique, lead guitar playing that is something that Hank Williams Jr. certainly took on and worked at rather than just sticking with chords. As Hank says, country rock, southern blues. He had all of these influences that he stuck in a melting pot and then came up with his own sound because of all of those influences. Certainly the lead guitar has a lot of minor pentatonic blues scale. We've got expressive bends as well. The delivery of the vocal has got that attitude in there and it certainly comes from the intro, but the storytelling nature of country music is in there as well because the way Hank delivers these vocals is in that storytelling style. He's not just rushing through the lyrics here. He's making sure that you hear every single word. As for the Bama band, they're so spot on in the background, such a tight performance. And who else noticed the counting that Hank gives on his guitar while he's talking at the beginning of the song, but then the whole band come in absolutely spot on to the way that Hank wanted it. And we also have saxophone in there that makes such a difference. We do have a little saxophone solo towards the end of the track and Hank also goes into a second solo section. So there is so much in this performance to get into and the crowd are into it as well. You can tell that Hank is putting across the message to the crowd but he's connecting with everybody in the audience just like he's talking to them individually. And that's what the great performers and great artists can do. We had a little bit of hybrid picking by Hank in the intro, and that's when you hold the pick between your thumb and your first finger, and then you use your second finger and your third finger to pluck the highest strings. The interesting thing about Hank's lead guitar playing is that when he ends a phrase, he goes to a classical side-to-side -side vibrato. And this is something that might just have been his artistic choice, but the lines that he's playing, the style that he's playing very much is rock and blues. So you'd expect to see that rock blues vibrato in there, which is when you just bend the string up and then let it go back down, or you can pinch down on the string, but you get a nice even bend that you're going to be supplying that vibrato with. It might be an artistic choice or Maybe he just didn't work at the rock blues vibrato so that he had that option to go to. But with Hank Williams Jr., I think certainly there's an argument for if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Due to Hank Williams being such an inspiration for country artists around at the time, future generations of those artists, but also artists in general from different genres, it meant that when Hank Williams Jr. was being brought up by his mum, Audrey Williams, they'd have visitors to the house such as Johnny Cash and Merle Haggard, Earl Scruggs, Lightning Hopkins, and Jerry Lee Lewis. There are so many people that Hank Williams Jr. was surrounded by during his childhood and growing up. He first played on stage when he was eight years of age. He had his recording debut at the age of 15. So at this time, when Hank Williams Jr. was 15, 1964 is when the album was released, Hank Williams Jr. sings the songs of Hank Williams. So straight away, you've got that direct link to his father. That album got to number 12 in the charts, so it was successful. And there was another album, Your Cheating Heart, 1964, same year, that was a direct link to his dad again. So especially in the 60s and maybe part of the 70s, people would see Hank Williams Jr. as almost not a tribute, but an impersonation maybe of his father performing a lot of his father's tracks. So it would be very easy to get typecast as that kind of artist who is just paying tribute to his dad. But in the mid 70s, Hank Williams Jr. moved to Alabama. And this is where he started to get those Southern rock influences and apply that to his playing and his performing. And he was playing with guys like Toy Caldwell and Waylon Jennings, Charlie Daniels, and playing with those guys, it turned into an album in 1975 that was called Hank Williams Jr. and Friends. It's around this time in 1975 that Hank Williams Jr. had a really serious accident. He almost died because he was mountain climbing in Montana and the snow gave way underneath his feet and he fell almost 150 meters onto rocks. So he suffered massive injuries. He had multiple skull and facial fractures. 
He took two years to recover from that. I mean, he was lucky to live just full stop, but he managed to recover after two years. He had to learn to talk again, learn to sing again. And this is part of the reason why his image is the way it is, because he grew a beard to hide scarring and the hat as well and the glasses were all something that came along after those facial injuries. I think for the style of music and the direction that Hank Williams Jr. was going in, the image change actually suited it because it had more of an attitude and those Southern rock influences just seemed to suit that image. So fortunately he did recover. This is now 1987, the video that we're looking at. So Hank Williams Jr. got back on the horse and he had to learn to sing again. It must have been very difficult, but he persevered and throughout the late 70s, early 80s and continuing through, he really started to get his own identity, his own sound in his music with all of these influences and made a massive impact on the charts. But let's get back into this performance and watch it until the end. I learned from Leonard Skinner. I learned from Ernest Tubb too. I play a little country rock, Dixieland, gospel, and southern blues. Now I'm looking for a lover. I come here to have some fun. My name is Bo Seaver. Yeah, I'm a son of a gun. Some of them are born with it. Some of them don't never, ever get it. The backstage honey. The thing I really love is to get down with a real band. And there we have it, a standing ovation and the groove that is in this performance. That's what gets you into it. It is so rock solid. Hank's delivery, making that connection with the audience is such a massive part of it as well because it gives the performance a certain feel and that's what the audience get into. And you have some artists who can feed off an audience and Hank is definitely one of those that can feed off the audience and then almost edit his performance to then react with the audience and get them into it even more. So then by the end, everybody is so into the performance and just appreciating the great music that's on show. Sometimes artists can have almost an invisible wall that they're performing behind and they never make that connection. Whereas guys like Hank Williams Jr. have that ability of being personable, being likable, still singing something with attitude, but it's that approach of us against them and the audience are always fully with Hank Williams Jr. You could say that it all stems from that country influence of having songs that have a serious theme running through them and getting that through to your audience. More likely, you would attribute this to outlaw country. I did mention Waylon Jennings earlier and also Johnny Cash. These guys that would have influenced Hank, but 
then Hank Williams Jr. could put that into his own sound. So in the 1970s, Hank Williams Jr. was having an impact on the charts, and in the 1980s is when it went crazy, because from 1984, he had six albums that all went straight to number one in the country music charts consecutively. In 1989 was when he released the duet, There's a Tear in My Beer, and that was with his father. They used electronic merging technology in order to make it appear as if they were performing together. And that was voted video of the year by the Country Music Association. And he also won a Grammy for that in 1990. And that was for the best country vocal collaboration. So he had massive success in the 80s. He released A Country Boy Can Survive early in that decade. And that went platinum as a single. And also there's another track called All My Rowdy Friends are coming over tonight and that went on to become the theme song for Monday Night Football. We do have that here in England but it's what you would call in the USA soccer so it's a totally different thing but he won some Emmy Awards for that particular track and that was in 91 through to 94 so he picked up four of those awards. But bringing things up to date, Hank Williams Jr. released It's About Time in 2016, and that got to number two in the country charts. The album before that, in 2012, that was called Old School New Rules, that got to number four in the charts. So still releasing fantastic albums, and by the way, he's done 56 studio albums in all, and that's one of those things that you could say, and people will say, it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. So bear in mind that out of those 56 albums, 50 made it into the top 40 of the charts, which is just crazy consistency. He also has had 11 number one singles and the run that I mentioned earlier in 1984 when he had six successive releases that went to number one in the country music charts the one that really let him down in 1990 was called Lone Wolf because that got to number two in the charts so he only just missed out on getting seven in a row straight to the number one spot so Hank Williams Jr., one of those artists that is always going to be compared to his father because of what his father achieved. And I can't think of a more fitting way to honor the memory of your dad by having such a successful career, but moving into your own sound and just following your own path. And that's certainly something that Hank Williams Jr. has done. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.